powerful, exhilarating, historical, masterful, highly anticipated, best. Words we as gamers use in an attempt to relay to others our feelings about the titles we play, the experiences we've had in those worlds. We want to express our love and appreciation for the emotions, thrills, moments, and memories that these games have given to us. We use these words because it's less about our own feelings and more about trying to tap into the feelings of the other person. We want them to identify with the experience they haven't had yet by relating it to the experiences they have had. This is why those words are so incredibly common in game reviews. The reviewer knows that their work is ultimately for someone else, and they want to evoke certain responses in you in order to mimic the response they had. It's their job to make you feel like they felt when they first played the game the first time. We as individual gamers do this all the time naturally. When you jump into the comments of a YouTube review and defend a game that you loved but they hated, or into a Reddit post in order to express to the hive mind how good a game really is, you're trying to convince other people, you're selling your experience to others in the hopes that they will agree. I guarantee there's one game that you, as the individual, believe is better than any other. It is the best. There's nothing that is better than this game. You love it. It's incredible. Take a moment. Just a moment. Pause the video if you need to get a game in your mind. Something that is truly the best. Not just good, not just well received by others, not highly rated by reviewers. The game that you believe is better than any other. Something perfect. Got it? Good. I'm going to tell you why it sucks. First, let's consider some games that are generically perfect. These are the games that everyone plays, games that are pretty universally accepted as the best. According to Metacritic, the top five games of all time are Zelda Ocarina of Time, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 on the PlayStation, Grand Theft Auto 4, Breath of the Wild on the Switch, and Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast. These are the five best games ever made, universally loved. I bet your game isn't on that list. It could be, but it probably isn't. These games are better than your game. If by some miracle your game is one of them, that doesn't matter either since they're all the same. They are universally good. There's no difference. Your favorite game is worse or no better than GTA 4 and Soul Calibur and Tony Hawk. If you played any of those and didn't like them or think your favorite game is better, you are universally incorrect. There's a common theme amongst these games as well. They are, all five, designed to be approachable to newbies but require time and effort to become truly expert in. They have a good balance of graphics, story, gameplay, mechanics, and history. They are the first, or they were the last, the pinnacle of an age or the impetus for change. All of them are, in some way, important. By being important, by being approachable, a lot of people were able and interested in playing them. They reached a level of saturation in the gaming world, and even those people who didn't play them know that they are good. It's probable that you could find someone who hasn't played any of them, but thinks all of them are great games. But, you say, that's just reviewers. They're all lying, paid-off scumbags. They don't know what good games are. It's more than just selling well. It's also about being iconic, being special. There are a lot of really iconic games as well. Time Magazine has a whole list of them, and they make sense. Tetris, Super Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, Doom, and Ms. Pac-Man fill out their top five. These are games that are so iconic that even non-gamers know about them. They sold in the tens of millions, created entire genres, reinvigorated the industry, and imprinted themselves onto the cultural fabric of Western history. They are so incredibly important. Ah, there's that word again. Important. I bet you can hum the theme song of at least one of these games, whether it be Tetris or Doom. You might be able to remember exactly where those hidden stars are, or the perfect speedrunning strategy you learned but could maybe never perfect. These are games that are transcendent. They move people and enter the zeitgeist in a way comparable to major events in history. Is one of those five your favorite game? Are they the best games of all time, according to you? Certainly, they're important. But there's a good chance you haven't even played all five of them. 
and if we count all 10 of the iconic and highest rated games, it'd be unlikely you'd played them all. These are the most well-rated, highly regarded, best-selling, most anticipated historical games of all time. They are the best. It's not a discussion. They're beyond the best. Your favorite game has to be one of them. They're the best. You can't have a favorite that isn't the best. Of course, your game probably isn't in that list. Being important isn't enough for the individual. These are games that are well regarded by most people. That 99 out of 100 score doesn't mean it's perfect, it means that 99 out of 100 people would recommend it. It's hard to shift your thinking that way. Certainly, we all know review scores are a big deal, but ultimately a game with a 70 is only better than 40% of other games. We rate things naturally high. Most games are rated an 8 out of 10 in general. When we start saying favorite, this has remarkably little to do with review scores. What makes something your favorite is so personalized that we just label it as individual preference of one over another. It's difficult to even put into words what makes one thing your favorite and another second best. This is when we start lapsing into emotion, into those words. Powerful, emotional, experience. We desperately want someone to know what we feel about our favorite games. Think back to your favorite game. Maybe it's a sports game or a shooter. It could be a JRPG, an MMO, a dancing, or a racing game. This is your favorite game of all time. It is the best game to you. If I had to guess, the thing that you like about it is that it resonates in some way with you. That's not much of a guess, of course. It's your favorite, so it should resonate. But that resonance is perfectly aligned to your preference, the period of time that you played it in, or the emotions it imparted in you. In order for a game to be truly fantastic to a single person, it has to take risks. It has to move away from what is commercially successful or culturally important. It needs to align itself to a specific subset of person and fulfill their wants as perfectly as possible. Simply by the nature of taking those risks, it is likely to turn someone else off. If you relate your favorite game to someone, there's a very good chance that it won't be their idea of the perfect game it doesn't hit all the marks for them. As soon as you start relating that perfection to others further away from the type of person who enjoys similar games, you'll start finding that those risks it took to match your preferences so perfectly are ironically perfectly designed to turn others away. See, a game that takes enough risks to be truly fantastic is by its nature unlikely to appeal to a broad base. It will cause people who don't enjoy its experimentation to not like it. If your favorite game is Dark Souls and you think that through its use of unforgiving difficulty and a demand for perfection in execution makes it easily the best game of all time, there are plenty for whom those same traits are the reasons why they will never play it. Let's look at an example. Bob's favorite game is a sports title. That immediately loses a lot of other people who don't like sports games. Some are still around, but Bob's favorite game is a soccer game. There's plenty of people who like sports games and don't like soccer. Unfortunately, Bob's favorite game is a soccer management simulator. Now, we have a much smaller group of people who like sports titles, like soccer games, and also like soccer management simulators. If we went up just one level to the soccer genre, there's a lot of people who like soccer games. But Bob just wants to simulate the games themselves and enjoys managing teams. As we get more granular in terms of interest, the amount of people interested in those games declines. We find ourselves with a much smaller group that does like the game versus those who don't. You see, similar to enjoying scary movies versus thought-provoking movies, or enjoying rock music versus bluegrass instrumentals, only a small subset enjoys it. The rest don't understand it or actively despise it. So, think of your favorite game. The game that is better than all the rest that you identify with, that is unique and cool, and you just wish everyone could play it and enjoy it like you do. Imagine telling someone you've never met about this game, but they're not really into it. It's not their cup of tea. 
Imagine their response. That game? I think that game sucks. Thanks to Aaron Black from Aaron Black Edits and Austin from VNex and VCards who are essential to these videos. Without them, these talk videos would take longer and look worse. Thanks also to Pete from Minimi for the extra line. I also want to thank our patrons. We've recently gone through a change in our format in order to better serve our audience. And our patrons had a lot to do with that. If you're a fan of this channel, becoming a patron is a big deal for us, and even for only $1 a month, you're helping to offset the time and costs of making videos several times a week. And it gives you a direct line to me. When we have questions and need help making a decision, we go to our patrons first. Now that we've gone through the whole discussion, let me know what game you were thinking of the whole time. My favorite game, the game I think is better than any other in the history of games, is Thief the Dark Project. It's a truly perfect game for me. I recognize that most people haven't even played it or they associate the name with the truly abominable reboot that had the side effect of making me never pre-order a game again. Regardless, I'm interested to know what titles you think are the best. The next talks is going to be about a game that I reference a lot. It's the most influential game of all time. Every game that has come out after it has in some way pulled from what it created from the world that was born after it. I'll lay it all out for you. As usual, if you liked this, like it. If you didn't, don't like it. If you did like it, however, you can watch another one up in the corner right now, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.